video we are going to fix some battens to some walls in order to install handleless kitchen units. To make it interesting one of the walls is a stud partition wall and the other wall has been dot and dabbed. You might not need to install a batten if you are fitting a kitchen it all depends on the design of the kitchen and the width of the worktop etc. Starting in the corner I need to fix a batten to this wall we can work out the length of the batten from the plan. Because we're spacing this 50mm away from the wall, it is relatively easy. I've got a piece of 3 by 2 timber, which is approximately 50mm. We're not up to a couple of millimetres. And what I've done, you'll see the magnets there. I've actually found where the studs are. And we've got two there that we can use on one right in the corner. If the plasterboard was not on the stud partition wall, you would be able to see that we are fixing into these three studs. You'll see that I have been prodding, so I've found the exact centre of the studs. And then I've cut that piece of wood, that will go on there, and we'll get a fixing through there into that stud, and then two there and two there. The cupboards will then be fixed onto this batten. I also need to do the same for the base units. They all need to be spaced 50 millimetres away from the wall because of the specific design of this kitchen. So I'm going to put the first batten at 66 inches from the floor. I've come to that measurement because that is where there is a solid piece on the back of the oven housing. We can screw straight through that to get a really good fixing. So I'm going to take the batten and put it so that the centre is at 66 inches. And then I'm just going to drive in one screw. put the spirit level on there and we'll just get it level and it's not actually far off at that. You can now drive in another screw. And then we'll drive in the other three screws. I should point out that I've actually pre-drilled the timber already. I have also done a video on fixing to studs and I will put a link to that video in the description. And then finally the one in the corner. I've had to put that on an angle because the stud is right in the corner. And now that is absolutely solid. I've cut it to the correct length but miscalculated by 10 millimetres so I had to trim down the batten which I did in situ. It does not matter if I mark the wall as the base end panel will cover that. The long batten for the base units for this wall was fitted in exactly the same way although I had to use some shims in places as the wall seemed to be slightly bored. The shims prevent the screws from bending the batten when the screws are tightened. You can see how far out the wall is when the worktop is put in position for marking. You can see that it's touching the tall end panel. The worktop is also touching the wall at the opposite end, yet there is a huge gap. In this second example, I'm fitting a longer batten to a wall that is dot and dabbed. That means that the wall is solid, but that the plasterboard is adhered to the wall using drywall adhesive. I have worked out how high the batten needs to be by adjusting the base unit to the correct height so that the plinth plus floor covering will fit under the unit. I can then set the batten just below the height of the unit so that the worktop will not catch the batten. This batten needs to be 2700 millimeters in length and I'm ensuring that I position this below the height of the unit by a few millimetres. I have now cut a piece of timber to use as a support at one end whilst I drill the batten and get the first fixing in. I 
I'm holding the baton against the wall, ensuring that it is level. I have drilled the holes through the baton using a drill bit suitable for wood and now spotting through those holes so that we know exactly where to drill the wall. To fix this baton I'm using Corfix fixings which I have covered in another video. If you are fixing a baton to a solid wall you can simply use the same technique as I'm using here but you can use traditional wall plugs and long screws to fix the baton to the wall. Again, I'll check that it's level before marking the rest of the fixing holes. So I'm going to go straight through with this drill bit. And then when I've done that, I need to counterbore it for these screw heads. These can only actually fix material that is 30 millimeters thick, and that is about 50. So we need to counterbore that by a good 30 millimeters, and we're going to do that using a spade bit. So obviously this time I'm not going to go all the way through. When drilling these holes in the baton I'm making sure that I avoid any pipes or cables which can easily be seen. Here is a picture of the wall before the plasterboard was fixed. All holes in the baton are pre-drilled and counterboard. Now I can spot through all of the holes and remove the baton whilst the holes are drilled in the wall. I'm now drilling the wall using a SDS drill, using a 10mm diameter drill bit. To start off, I'm not using hammer action until I have gone through the plasterboard. Then I switch on the hammer action. I can then tap in the Corefix plug. Then the metal insert. I think I used about six or seven fixings on this button. I can now screw through the timber and fix it in position. Finally, I can remove the support from the end. I should point out that for tall units, I fixed two battens to the wall and tried to get a good fixing through the bracing chipboard on the back of the unit. I later found out when fitting the fridge, freezer and oven that these pieces prevent some electrical items from being fitted. So they were cut out and replaced with two very sturdy angle braces. I hope you found this video useful, please check out the other videos in the How To Fitter Kitchen playlist.